Welcome to Love Them Knives channel on YouTube. LTK here. Two Ya Knives. Yes. Two Ya Knives is a brand of knife. It's a company. It's a Chinese knife company. These knives are made in China. They make G10 models, kind of like this. And they make titanium models. But you order them here in the United States of America because they have a USA rep that provides the sales and the service to you. So you've got somebody to call and or contact right here in the US if you want to buy a knife or if you have questions or service needs. His name is Dave Warren and right in the Midwest USA, kind of more in the South in Kentucky, but uh, Great guy, very quick in his responses, at least when I've talked to him. So, yeah. Now, this particular model is the Tuya Knife Talon. This is a fairly newly released uh, model. And it is the T1704. This happens to be a first production run, which you can still get on their site as of the filming of this. Uh, review and review we use that word very very loosely on this channel I'm just gonna show you a knife that I really like and there's your lock up on it so it's just about 50 percent I'd say folks and these are uh, ceramic bearings now this is this is a pretty kind this is a pretty wild design needless to say Check this out. Very slender knife. These titanium scales are really nicely smoothed and contoured. See, check that out. And even though if this is like, no, no, I do not like recurved blades. That's fine. That's fine. This is not your knife then. Um, and sometimes it could be a little stabby, a little stabby, but <laughs> never mind. Um, but piercing, yes, it can do that. And cutting, yes, it can do that. Can it cut anything else? No, it's totally, totally worth it. Oh my, oh yeah. Okay. So it can do that. Can it pierce? Yes, it can. Can it cut and pierce? Yes, it can. So yeah, it's got a good edge on it. And I like it. Personally, I like it. Of course, can I can I sharpen a recurve? Yeah, I can do that. Yes, I can. I have the KME system, but I bought the rod for being able to do these recurves. Because otherwise, you got these big old diamond uh, stones, which are going to totally miss this part. But I've, I've got the attachment, so I can do that. Uh, and you might, if you like recurves, you might like this knife. It's light. It's big, it's slender, it's nicely finished and contoured. Okay, now let's pull our trusty old flashlight. Hasn't given up the ghost yet, right? So you can see that you've uh, weight relieved the scales. In fact, in fact, my friends, let me do something here because I will give you a little insight. Yes, I took that knife apart. This one right here. And it's this is a, the amazing miracle. It actually came back together. Perfect action. Very well, nicely centered. <laughs> and how did that happen with me fumbling around with my torxes and actually not stripping screws or screwing something up because the knife is well made and well put together so it comes apart comes apart goes right back together the flipping action is great on this let's look at the picture okay so here's your of course your hardened steel insert and over travel stop ceramic detent ceramic bearings of course your blade stop that goes in here uh, and it's magic, isn't it? 
No, no magic at all. And here's your backspacer. So, you know, screws come in from both sides and blah, blah, blah. This is not a big deal. And of course, since it's titanium, these are steel washers that come in contact with your bearings. Just in case, you might be curious. All right, so when it came apart, and when I pulled it apart, if you noticed, I mean, it looks pretty clean. I mean, there was a little, and so you can wipe that down if you want, but really, uh, I can't tell that the action is any different or feels any different now than it did when it came right out of the pouch. And I got it in this pouch, and uh, so it was kind of in this, this deal here, of course, which uh, geez, opened up and the pouch was inside and the knife was inside the pouch. Now, most of the knives I get come in a box that I have had before, came in a box, like the Chicane and the Argon. So I don't know if this is a change up or if this was just when he sent it to me because that was a different kind of situation. So I don't know. You'll have to ask him if that's a big deal with you that you want some kind of a hard shell box or uh, having the pouch is uh, better. And here's the pouch. So there you go. And it came inside this little plastic deal and then inside this pouch on this side and on this side you've got these two little compartments so you can put your other stuff your edc flashlight god only knows what else outside you know slide that on a pack or wherever to carry it and it's nice to have it protected so that's good this you know what this knife reminds me of come to think of it and it's a good size knife but it's slender look at the contouring here this reminds me a little bit of the Kaiser Sea Lion. Look at how nicely contoured. This one, these slabs look a little bit maybe thicker. Oh, this doesn't have a backspacer, but this one does. I'm, I'm kind of like if the Sea Lion would have this backspacer and this pocket clip, I'd be all over that. You know, um, I liked it. And, you know, because they did this, the blue around the pivot, why are you doing it? You know, I, I kind of like if they would have finished that that way. But this is like my favorite small Kaiser knife. And the thing is, when I got this one out, it just reminded me of the Sea Lion so much. And the action is just great. Maybe it drops a little much for you. I don't know. I mean, you can always adjust that. I mean, I just, it's the way I set it up for me. That's pretty nice though. It's centered. There's no blade play. There's no lock rock or anything on this knife. Nice grind, sharp out of the box. And let's do some, let's do some stuff before I get like 20 minutes in. And then you guys are going, you never weighed the damn thing and all this kind of stuff. Okay, 0 0.150 uh, blade stock. That's going to be four millimeters or really close. Here we go. So, yeah, it's 3.8 millimeters. You know, and then you're dropping from a pretty heavy stock down to a fairly thin uh, blade. So, I don't um, edge. And I don't. If I can zero this little mic out, I don't know if I can give you a good reading here. I'm not good at measuring thickness behind the edge. And this is, not, I don't want millimeters, I want inches, folks. Okay. So I don't know. Uh, it drops pretty quick. 28, 25, and then nothing. So if you think that 25 was right behind the edge, it, that might be, you might be right there, but it, it drops really quick. That's a big drop, quick. But, I mean, seems to slice pretty good. I mean, obviously, it's really sharp out of the box. This doesn't feel like, like 
a lot of knives that have a real thick uh, blade stock where, you know, where it's really fat behind the edge. It slices a lot nicer than that. So, but, I, oh man, it feels good in the hand. It really does. Uh, the ergos are really good. Now, here's the deal. Obviously, this is very, very slender. Let me show you how slender this is. It's very slender here. So, yeah, let's, let's get it between the jaws. Okay, so three quarter of an inch, 19.4 millimeters. Okay, so, and in this choil, six tenths of an inch, that's not much. That's not much. Now, um, let's go total fatness for, you know, taking up real estate, top of the flipper tab. To here and let's see what we got but there's not gonna be much here this is a very slender knife which is nice for as long as it is and we're gonna measure it here pretty soon looking through this camera is just a blast okay an inch so there you go and that's at the let's go out here this will probably give you pretty close yeah less than an inch I mean that's amazing that's amazingly thin Come here, Bertha. Let's give them a readout. Should be like, oh, uh, three and three quarter. So it's three and three quarter and maybe, you know, they're saying like 3.8 something of an inch. So this is, and, and that looks right to me, 3.8. So about 97 millimeters. I mean, we can fuss over a millimeter or two, but eight and three eighths overall. Uh, which is 21, a little over 21 centimeters. So eight and three eighths, doesn't that seem kind of, that seems fairly short overall. And of course you could just do the math and figure out the handle length. But uh, let's do this. Four and a half, see? I mean like, take the para too. I mean, at best, it's a three and a half inch blade. Okay, at best. And it's a five inch handle though. It's a five inch handle. So it's bigger, longer handle than this, but the blade's not as long. Even on top here at this aspect ratio, it looks smaller. But this is eight and a quarter. This is only eight and three eighths. I mean, these are basically the exact same size knife. But if pivot to pivot, you know, this blade, and in this aspect ratio it doesn't look, but if you go pivot to pivot, this aspect ratio, you can see the blade's bigger here and much more slender. Check that out. But these are basically the same size, although this is 3.8, 3.5. So a longer blade be interesting to find out how fat this is. Let's see if we can get this wrapped around here, um, out here in the widest part of the knife. Half inch, half inch, which is uh, 12.6. So this is actually fatter across here. This is 0.46. So, I mean, a few tenths, a few tenths. This is heavier blade stock. This is three, five, this is three, eight, but not, not a huge, huge difference. Interesting, interesting. You know what? Another thing that would be really interesting is the weight on this. And I've got some specs I can throw up there on the, I, I'll show you here in a minute, off this way, website, which I'll give you the link to the website. I'll give you the link to their USA Facebook, USA, uh, to you knife sales and service. <sighs> yeah, 3.4 ounces. So that is really light. Wow, I wonder what, hmm, fancy, I can't remember what you weighed. Yeah, it's lighter than the Para 2. It's lighter. Um grams it's under 100 it's 96 that's light it does feel light but it feels solid 
and I really like the contours. It does remind me of the sea lion so much. Uh, but I do like the fact that they threw a backspacer and a pocket clip on here. I think the pocket clip does just right. It seems really good. And I have put it in my pocket. It's fine. Sometimes these mill clips can get a little obtuse. Uh, they can get overly stiff or they can catch and be a problem. This one, I mean, of course, I wear jeans all the time or just like cargo shorts or something. So, yeah, I don't know how they'd be on dress pants or a thinner material. Um, lanyard hole, which is tubed right through that backspacer. See that? That's cool. Nice action on it. Kind of a little bit of a strange kind of choil thing going here. I don't know what that's all about, but at least they're giving you this sharpening choil in here. So that's good. Stonewash flats, if we didn't say that before with a satin, of course, grind. Good looking knife. Feels good in the hand. Man, great action. Cuts really well. You know, don't know about the angle coming down here from that, but eh, you're going to get that with these thin blades. Unless they start off at like two and a half millimeters and work their way down, you know. This is 3.8, so yeah, you're, you're wheedling it down a little bit pretty quick. In any case, I don't know. It slices really good, and I'm sure it'd pierce really good. And, you know, reverse grip. That feels good. You know, one thing for sure, I mean, it's still a sizable knife at eight and three eighths. It's got room for your fingers on there. And I don't have real small hands, that's for sure. And yeah, so it feels good in the hand. You know, you're like any knife uh, that's this slender, of course, your fingers are going to wrap around and touch you like that. I mean, you get a tall, tall, you know, knife, uh, scale, and your, you know, your fingers aren't going back and touching the palm of your hand here as much, you know, as likely there. Where this one, yeah, of course. See? Yeah, big difference. But, I mean, doesn't mean you, you, you know, you don't have a good grip on it. You do. And this one's a little thicker than the pair of two. So, you, you've got that kind of yeah, contact you can make on there. Real easy. Feels good. You can't go forward really here. I mean, I guess you could slide up a little bit, but you'd want to watch that. But, you know, really, it just, it does feel good in the hands. Very light. Love the contouring. The finish work. This really, really light, fine, super fine, like bead blast finish. I mean, that's what I'd call it. But very nice. Weight relieved like, well, I mean, it's weight relieved enough now. That's for sure. Very light. But, you know, 150 bucks on his website. I never did pull that for you. Let me do that. Um, <clears throat> oh, and also, take you on a little tour here. I mean, uh, uh, there's the talisman. That's a G10. I don't have one of those. Um, and there's the shuriken. I don't have one of those either. That's an M390. That's 154. And then this one uh, is basically one of these in red, you know, D2 models, which are $44.99. You know, that's a great deal for D2, G10, and ceramic bearings. I mean, that, you know, there's a lot of knives in FRN and no bearings at all that are in that price range. And I was going to grab you the actual page that shows the Talon. So you can get these um, specs off here. 3.7, okay, uh, I think it's closer to 3.8. Oh, well, edge, yeah, maybe 3.7 on the edge. Um, S35VN, 3.8 millimeter, yeah, right on with that, 3.6, yeah. Everything there, ceramic bearings. 
and their, their site doesn't print very good. But there's already one review on this knife from somebody who bought it who just loves it because, you know, they like that recurve. So if you're a recurve lover uh, and or you like these slender, easy to carry knives, but you don't want to give up the length, then, you know, because Sea Lion is a smaller knife. I mean, it's shorter overall. But it still looks like a, this looks like a monster. And this is small compared to this. But this, that just tells you how small this thing is. Uh, you know, like if you look at the full size grip, look at how, you know, tall and brutally, you know, wide it is compared to this. That's insane. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah, this is real easy to carry. I have never been a big, big fan of recurve. <sighs> I don't know. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this one and carry it and stuff and see how that works out. But I think this will be okay. Um, for what it's trying to be conceptually and design-wise, I think they did a pretty good job. I really do. I love the fit and the finish. The ergos are really good. It slices really well, good materials, and it's, what is it, 150 bucks? I didn't even have, is there a price in here? Hell no. Okay, I think it's 150, 152, something like that. So go on that site. You can just put it in your cart, buy it, and they'll ship it, and you'll have it in a couple days. Yeah, like it really well. And of course, you know, hey, we've got... Of course, the chicane, we've got the argon, and of course now also out is the, th yeah, is the thorax. This is another new model that's released. And this is, uh, they come in, you know, you can get this in blue, you can get this in tie, uh, you can get this in blue, you can get this in regular tie. So, whichever you prefer. Good knives, though. Really great action. Fit and finish seems to be top rate. They're sharp. There's USA, uh, you know, representation. I just, uh, I'm trying to figure out what am I missing. And at $150 a piece, uh, you know, there's a lot of knives, 200 plus, uh, that I'm thinking about that are S35VN. You know, they're not M390 or anything. And they're... They're a lot more expensive. Now, you know, Tuya Knives is not exactly a household brand name. But I'll tell you what, I think they're up and comers here because of the USA rep and the fact that these designs are really very functional and they feel good in the hand, ceramic bearings. I, I like the designs that they're doing and they seem to be really solid quality knives. I, you know, and I've handled a couple knives in my day. So I, th I think I'm thinking down the right direction. These are really, really well done. Um, yes. And I was going to name another uh, Chinese knife brand name that you would recognize. And you know what? I'm not going to do that. But I, they, they, they remind me, if you look at these pivots uh, and the decorative rings around there, they look a lot like <clears throat> certain other brand. But these are their own designs, their own production facility, doing their own thing. Not that they haven't ever been in the knife baking business with maybe some other manufacturer that you might know. All right, I'm gonna let you go. Hey, Flanagan, did you ever get in here, buddy? Hey. You've been slacking on the job, dude. Take care, my friends. It's uh, it's getting crazy, but we got we can't even get this guy in here. In any case, you know what we do on this channel. We love them knives, so stay sharp.